Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. We do the deep dive and the due diligence on the blockchain projects and platforms that matter because we aim to be the most reliable source of intellectual discourse and insight that inform, educate, and bridge the gap between the blockchain industry and the mainstream. Your choice of Haskell as programming language. Mm -hmm. um, famously very difficult to find these programmers, right? Uh, and so how do we get to that kind of plethora of of applications and and uh, uh, ideas and projects when you know few people, few talent right. exist for this for this language. Well, y yes and no. So so that's a, so we do get a little criticism from time to time about using Haskell for the base layer of the system, but it's like saying, well, this this surgical equipment is super difficult to use. Well, yeah, of course. You know, but why but, did you choose it? Well, because Haskell is basically built for high assurance code. It's built uh, by very smart people, academics and, and high assurance engineers, so people in the financial industry like uh, Standard Chartered and uh, Barclays and uh, uh, people in Wall Street like uh, DAML, uh, Digital Asset Holdings, excuse me. And basically what it allows you to do is get a very high assurance that the code you've implemented is correct. If you look at the history of the cryptocurrency space over the last 10 years, we're riddled with uh, exchange failures due to poor code. We're riddled with uh, multi-sig failures where people are able to steal hundreds of millions of dollars. The Dow hack was the most famous hack in our industry. And this is because we had an intent of what we wanted to do, but the reality was the code didn't match that intent. So you need a programming language that gives you a much higher degree of certainty and a larger toolbox and much more precise. It's like a scalpel that can allow you to very carefully implement things so you know that it's going to work correctly. Now that's your base layer. Mm -hmm. Then when people build on top of that platform, you have to think about the whole ecosystem. The problem right now with smart contracts is some people are running around believing that we're just going to throw away the entire internet, start over, get rid of Amazon Web Services, get rid of Azure uh, and these platforms and, and do something entirely new. That's very unrealistic and unreasonable you're still going to have the server client model, you're still going to have Android apps and iOS apps, and you're still going to have Amazon. So what you need to do is say the blockchain is a service layer, mm -hmm. and what it's doing is it's mm -hmm. making your app better. It's reducing the level of trust that you have. It's guaranteeing that you still have access to it. Like let's say an online game, what if the online game uh, vendor goes out of business? Well, the game ends. Well, what if you could guarantee that the game would continue even if the company went out of business? So these, these kinds of things. So you create more complex applications and they have now more dynamicism to them and the blockchain is just providing services to them instead of trying to replace the traditional server model, client model. If that's the case, then you can still use all your tools and all the things that you do for the normal server client model, whether that be JavaScript or Java or C Sharp or however you write those applications. But then for that very particular, very precise code that if you get it wrong, people lose money or people mm -hmm. lose their privacy and they could get hurt, uh, that needs better tools yeah. and that use very specific tools and every 10-15 years the industry goes through this one. Steve Jobs launched the iPhone he didn't say how do we stay interoperable with Windows and you know how do we keep everything that built it he built a completely new app model understanding that there was going to be a little bit of a learning curve but after they got through it you could get a significantly better user experience. Is that, that the goal of Cardano? Exactly. Is that the goal of iOS? It, it's basically to balance the needs of what we have in the path with what we need to do today and introduce smart contracts in a, in a very pragmatic, reasonable way. Instead of trying to reinvent the internet, throw everything away, uh, we're trying to say, hey, let's add some additional services to your standard server client model so that you can reduce the amount of trust, increase your amount of privacy, and also decentralize it so that you always have access to these types of infrastructure if necessary. There are two, th there's two messages that I'm hearing from you. Incremental change with, with Haskell and really kind of formulating and using the code that really is the understructure of the JP Morgans and the standard charters mm -hmm. and all that. And then the systemic change, which you are doing a, at a countrywide level. Mm -hmm. is, is one uh, isolated from the other, or do both have to work in concert with each other? Yeah, you have to look at trends to, to kind of get a good strategy of how to get to market and get adoption and scale. So one of the magic uh, miracles of companies like Tesla is at the end of the day, they live and die by the quality of batteries. Uh, how fast they can charge, their energy density, the cost of the batteries, the weight of the batteries. So are they doing the research? No. The research comes from your device and my device. All these big multinational companies, they want to give you an iPad that has a 24-hour battery life. They want to give you a cell phone that charges in 30 minutes. That same technology can then be backported into what Tesla is doing. So similarly, if you look at where Africa is at or Southeast Asia is at or Latin America is at, you have these huge international mandates for fair trade, uh, for uh, sustainable farming, uh, for tracking and traceability of uh, products. 
And, and if they want to be global citizens, actually make money in the global marketplace, they have to actually start adhering to these new standards, which means we have to move from a paper-based, analog, person-to-person, -person, oral economy to a digital economy. So whether there's blockchain or not, whether there's IOHK or not, there's many, many billions of dollars and huge international pressure uh, for carbon reduction, all these things to get these countries back into uh, a new framework that is uh, understandable. So then what we can do is then inject ourselves in that conversation and say, hey, look, the money's there, the need is there, the demand is there. Blockchain is actually a really good solution for you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we have that, then we can take these incremental things we've done and wire them into these revolutionary things that we've done and uh, both systems will work together and bring lots of users.